So it is time now for our Money Watch report. It's the 2024 college acceptance season, which means families are grappling with an important question, how to pay for tuition. CBS News business analyst Jill Schlesinger joins us live from New York to tell us what you need to know. Jill, good morning to you. So this year, the mm. federal government updated the free application for federal student aid form, better known as the FAFSA form. Did it deliver on the promise of saving time and helping more families <laughs> qualify for those federal loans? Not exactly, and although the Department of Ed has already addressed the early technical glitches of the form itself, a new problem has come to light. Some colleges say they have received incorrect information from the government. DOE has acknowledged the problem. They say they're correcting the errors, but these problems should be resolved by the end of April. That means some students and their families are going to get late packages from some of the schools that they may impact. Oh, what a mess. Okay, so for those with financial offers in hand, what do they need to know? You know, I think these are so hard to read because there is no single way that any of these schools are required to detail scholarship, grant, and loan information. So they all use different terms. When you get these packages, make sure you understand what is being offered and be clear about what terms these loans are carrying. And if you have a question, call the financial aid office. Just say, hey, what's a loan and what is free money? By the way, if your family finances have changed since you completed the FAFSA, maybe you had a job loss, a medical expense, or you're caring for an elderly parent, please make sure you appeal to get a better package. Jill, college tuition is more expensive, and often people graduate with significant student loans that need to be paid back. So that begs the question here, is a four-year degree still worth it? The answer is yes, but with a caveat. Data show college graduates definitely have lower unemployment rates, they earn more money over their careers, and they are able to build a larger net worth over their lifetimes. But of course, if you borrow too much money, all of these advantages, they start to narrow. A good rule of thumb, only borrow the amount of money that you will actually earn in your first job. So if you're going to be a software engineer, you could probably borrow a little bit more money. But if you're going into social services where your income will be lower for at least five or 10 years, try to, net, try to actually reduce the amount of money you borrow so you can afford to do all the things you wanna do in your financial life. All right, thank you so much, Jill. For more analysis, you can go to jillonmoney.com.